Hey, my name is Bradley. Welcome to my channel, The Portly Gentleman. So today we are going to do a very exciting mod to my Mark II K washer. We are going to supercharge that bad boy. We're gonna add a 1600 watt heating element. So if that sounds good, stick around and watch. If you guys are interested in anything brewing related, I pretty much do it. A lot of brutal stuff, a lot more brutal stuff in the way with my beloved B80 right behind me. I can't wait to fire it up. So let's jump right into the video. Thanks. All right, here we are for today's project. You are gonna need, uh, I'm using my old Mark II uh, keg washer. I've always been one that wanted really hot water when washing kegs. I usually pre-rinse my kegs with a hose first to get all the real crud out of them. Just looking to get them really hot and really clean. So we're gonna start with this guy. Next, I got an, an Inkbird um, PID temperature controller. It's the Inkbird IPB-16S, I'll have a link below. Full disclosure, this one was given to me by Inkbird for review. I let them know I want to make a video on this topic and they very graciously sent me one, so thank you very much, Inkbird. Next, you'll need some sort of a thermal well. This is an old one I had on an old fermenter, uh, an SS unit, I believe. Next is this uh, high-powered heating element. This one's made by Kegland. I got it for more beer. I had to pay for this guy. I don't know anyone at more beer that watches my videos, uh, but it is good for 1600 watts, 120 volts. That should be more than enough power to heat up, um, you know, like a gallon and a half of water. I also got a, a hole saw from uh, more beer. This guy is 32 millimeters, should fit this guy's hole. And I have a hole saw that fits this thing at 17 millimeter, all for stainless steel. It should go through plastic lickety split. Uh, this guy is super easy to adjust. It does have a uh, GFI protection on the switch. It has a heating element off and on. It has a pump off and on. If you wanna run a pump or something, which we definitely do. So let's get this thing put together. All right, I got the hole saw chucked up. Got some reference marks here because we wanna try and, I wanna get this guy right in here so it's next to that pump. Hopefully that's a good idea. And I got some reference marks here to kind of guide me. I'm not sure if they're showing up on film. Got the drill ready. We'll go ahead and make a hole. So hole made. With any luck, I've not ruined this keg washer, because that would suck. Tighten down the nut. And there we have it. There is one heating element installed. This guy is still gonna fit on here as intended. And it's that simple. Um, this is a great idea. All right guys, so the last step here is just to take your, I'm using a crescent and give it a couple turns. It's got a silicone seal on there. I'm thinking we are in business. Next step is to assemble the little, uh, the, the uh, hole saw for this. So again, this is a, it's designed for stainless steel for putting a hole in a kettle or something, but it chews through plastic like nobody's business. It's got a spring on it, so it will eject that piece of stainless it cuts out. We're cutting plastic today. So then simply retruck your drill, get it tight. And we are gonna put the thermal well just right here, line up a good spot. Hopefully it'll make it. Plastic's pretty flexy. This guy isn't that critical. Wanna be able to get the nut on it and thread it in. So. Somewhere like right there. 
Seems like a great idea. So here we go. That went lickety split. Then just simply lock it down. And since we're dealing with plastic here, you know, it pretty much kind of will find its own kind of shape, I suppose, and seal. This wrench is probably overkill, but it's the one I got. Okay, so there we have it. Heating elements in, thermal well is in, so this guy knows what temperature the water is. Now the only thing left to do, figure out the plug, clean it out, fire it up, and clean some keg. So here we are back, water in the keg washer, box powered up, heating element plugged in, got the, uh, the probe in the well, thermal well about halfway down, no sensing all the way there in. So now we're gonna turn it on for the first time and hope nothing goes wrong. It's showing the probe is reading 100, I mean, excuse me, reading 71. The target is set to 122. That must be what it's out of the box. So let's kick it on. So there we are. 150 degrees selected here on the temperature controller. I don't know if you could see it. If we could hear it. But this thing's heating up. Obviously it works as advertised, so. All right, so here we are. Got a water jug on this. You guys can kind of see what's going on. It's a Mark II keg washer. I'm sure everyone has seen it by now. The big deal here is we have 1600 watts of raw heating power. Uh, it's kind of cool. There is now pump on and off control, so you don't have to unplug it if you use this Inkbird device. I will say that it took me a, a little while to get the temperature dialed in. It did not come out of the box uh, with the temperature probe reacting in the proper manner. So use my handy dandy probe, adjusted some settings, and got this guy dialed in. So now it's as simple as trying to hit my heat target temp and just turn on the pump. And that's it, so you can be able to call up uh, you know, pretty much any temp you want. I think PBW does best around 150, even 180, but I don't wanna push the plastic that hard or the pump. These pumps really do not like a lot of heat. So my next project, we're gonna do something a little fancier, a whole lot shinier. We are gonna use my beloved Blickman Riptide pump and make a proper heated keg washing system out of that. All right guys, thank you so much for sticking with me through that. If you guys like what you saw, I really would hope you would consider subscribing. It helps me a lot. The channel has grown so much, so quickly. I'm so grateful. If you guys haven't noticed my fancy new logo, it's my good friend Brian over at Short Circuited Brewers really kind of hooked me up with the logo, uh, advised me where to get the character and then photoshopped it all together. It's a skill I don't have, but Brian really knocked it out of the park. Makes me look like I'm professional when I'm not. I definitely don't look, sound, and act professional, so I'm not. But Brian, you are the man. Thank you so much. Uh, cool people exist. It blows my mind. So if you guys like the sound of what we just did today or the look, go ahead and subscribe. I'll be back again soon. Remember, home brewing is good. Thanks again.